Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to another game from the Altibox Norway Chess um, Tournament. This time I would like to show you the game of the Soul Leader. Alireza Firuzia is leading so far. I will show you the standings al at the end. So if you are interested, stay until the, uh, the end. And Alireza Firuzia is a point ahead of Magnus Carlsen so far. But he still has uh, three games um, to play against uh, very strong opponents. But, you know, all of the opponents in these tournaments are strong, uh, but he has to face uh, Magnus Carlsen, number one in the world uh, by ranking, Fabiano Caruana, number two, um, and Jan Krzysztof Duda, who doesn't have a great tournament so far, but he, for example, won against Magnus Carlsen, so definitely he is always uh, very dangerous as well, and he won many times um, against Alireza Firuzia as well. This time I would like to show you the game where Alireza play as black, and his opponent opponent Arian Tari uh, from Norway. He was the, the world champion, junior world champion in the past and now he get a very important experience in this uh, in this tournament. He has a chance to play against the best players uh, in the world. So uh, without further ado, let's see what happened on the board. Uh, Arian open with e4 and we have c6. So Karo can defense. Alireza Firuzia plays that opening um, again. He played it already a couple of times. Definitely uh, his preparation for this tournament. We have d4, d5, uh, exchange variation, and now bishop d3. Very natural square for this bishop. We have knight f6, we have c3 supporting the central pawn. And now, mm, usually in the Karokan defense, you would like to bring the bishop uh, to the game, the light square bishop. Uh, F4, F5 is not possible to play anymore. This is why we have Bishop G4. And now um, the Queen is under attack. So Queen B3 counter attacking on B7. We have Queen C7 defending and now H3. Uh, and now there is the question what to do with this Bishop? Because uh, it looks like, you know, pretty obvious that Bishop H5 can be played. And uh, indeed, this is the most popular answer. However, the outcome isn't that great. This is why Ali Reza Firuzia didn't go for bishop h5. What bad can happen? This pawn is protected only by the knight. So I hope you see that already after g4, bishop g6, uh, just exchange the bishops because bishop is hanging and then uh, kick the knight and after knight f to d7, queen d5, white actually wins the, um, wins the pawn. So uh, e5 can be played. The position can be also opened, but black still have uh, also the king in the center. So uh, um, probably knight e2 can be played, knight c6, uh, bishop e3 and um, black gonna castle on the, on the queen side. But white of course also gonna castle on the, on the queen side. And white still has a quite solid position with extra pawn. Um, the engine suggests that this is um, the equal position. Uh, however, you know, the pawn is always the pawn. Uh, we have bishop d7 then. Uh, Ali Reza Firuzia, you know, prepared that he doesn't want to play uh, being the pawn down. We have knight f3, pretty natural, knight c6, of course, a development, we have castle, uh, and now e6. So this bishop for now is gonna stay um, as a pretty much bad bishop. We have rook e1, now getting the rook to the, to the semi-open file, and now bishop d6, creating this battery, preparing um, e5, maybe later um, e4, uh, and so on. So uh, both of the bishops gonna be in the very beautiful uh, diagonal, so the position looks already very, very promising. We have bishop g5, um, the only good square for this bishop, because uh, where would you like to uh, move this bishop? You you move to um, to e3, this this bishop would work as a pawn, um, the, the rook would be blocked, and so on. So bishop g5 was played, and now how to react? How to react? This is the new move in the position. Uh, we have one game in the database where queen d1 uh, was played. However, as I said, bishop g5 may be threatening to actually take uh, the knight and mess up the pawn structure. What is the answer of Alireza Firuzia in this position? He actually just castle and say, okay, you can mess, mess up my uh, my pawn structure and what? You're gonna be in the troubles because if you play that, uh, what are you gonna do next? I'm gonna move the king to h8, I'm gonna bring the rooks, 
uh, double the rooks on the g file and this bishop's gonna support all the attack it looks like you know very very dangerous uh, plan if you try for example win the pawn queen c2 it just doesn't work this pawn okay cannot be defended but it doesn't need to be defended because uh, this pawn is actually untouchable because uh, of f5 and the bishop is lost okay so uh, black would have very comfortable game with extra piece of course this is why we have knight b to d2 and um, ariantari plays a very very solid chess um, and now we have knight h5 avoiding exchange and also heading to to f4 very nice outpost and from there look at this knight uh, first it, it attacked them the bishop which is unprotected also it controls e2 so if the rook would like to go and uh, uh, and you know helped in defense on this on the second rank that's not possible uh, also it's possible some sacrifice or g on g2 or h3 very dangerous um, position for the knight and i've seen already alireza firuzia play the knight to f4 or sometimes uh, on c4 also if the opponent uh, castle on the on the queen side uh, and i saw a couple of you know very aggressive games with with this very active knight so Ariantari just decided that uh, it's too much it's quite dangerous his queen is on the queen side and it cannot do anything there is no counterplay over there and if the queen is far um, and Alireza Firuzia managed actually to bring more pieces to the king side uh, then this queen cannot you know help in the, in the defense this is why we have queen d1 uh, and now f6 which probably Alireza would not play Play with the queen on b3 because uh, that would be very, pre pretty risky uh, for example e5 would not be possible because this pawn is hanging and so on uh, also you know c4 is possible just exchange that um, and the king would be you know open a bit uh, but with the queen on d1 uh, why not it looks like uh, it's it's very you know dangerous plan uh, but in the truth there is there is not much danger here very very well calculated by alireza and arian already needs to make decision what to do with the bishop and he doesn't have much choice if he retreat with the bishop to g3 he's gonna uh, lose the pawn here so we have bishop e3 finally the bishop works as a as a pawn on e3 uh, and now we have knight f4 as planned and now um decision big decision um give up the pair of bishops or not uh, it's possible uh, of course but you have to make decision uh, Arian prefers to to keep the pair of bishops so we have bishop f2 uh, also supporting g2 supporting h3 uh, so it's pretty good move and until now Arian Tari in the interview uh, I'm gonna show you the, the link uh, also in the description you can check uh, or, or over there Arian Tari said that until this moment he felt that his position is pretty good uh, but after after g5 which alireza firuzia said he said you know chess is difficult and uh, the thing is that engine says that this move is a pretty bad move g5 uh you know for the engine maybe but you know g4 is coming you have to react somehow or not and and how to continue so for example you cannot just kick the knight because the knight not gonna go anywhere black just simply play king h8 bring the rook to the g file and attack on the on the open file okay and you cannot even take the knight because you're gonna lose the bishop your position gonna be open and um, you're gonna lose them lose the game the bishop has nowhere to go uh, so ariantari uh, played c4 the best move in the position if somebody attacks you on the on the one uh, side then of course you have to counter attack in the center uh, or sometimes in the in the another side but in the center usually uh you know it can be very very strong uh, counter attack we have king h8 so alireza firuzia just follows his simple plan uh, and now we have rook c1 and now b4 is a very very natural plan rook g8 as planned and now b4 is not possible because the bishop actually can take uh, on b4 the engine suggests that a3 is the is the way to go prepare b4 the problem is after a5 what you're gonna play next uh, b4 is not possible 
and there are no no good continuations here. The engine suggests su such a moves like you know uh, rook c3, king h1. So there are no uh, you know good moves in this position. It's um, very deep uh, and difficult to understand position. Uh, Aryan Tari found another way. Uh, to pushing b4, that, that's his plan, and he eliminated the knight now. And now, how to pick up the, the, the bishop? If the pawn pick up the bishop, the problem is black are completely blocked on this diagonal. Uh, and just to kick this knight, it would take a lot of moves to, to play something like e5, maybe, uh, maybe e4 if it's possible, but it's still, you know, very, very complicated position. So Alireza Firuzia just calculated that it's not gonna gonna work this time. Uh, this is why he, we have Bishop F4 uh, and now immediately uh, B4. Of course, the the pawn cannot be taken because after uh, C takes on D5, the queen is under attack, so the queen has to be moved. Uh, and then th there is the problem: disconnected passed pawns are very very um, dangerous. They have a support from the uh, from the heavy pieces, and it's really really a uh, difficult position uh, for black to play white would have a really nice advantage so this is why we have queen d6 also we have another um, ideas here you know some uh, after exchanging the pawns some some moves like b5 this is another idea to uh, because the knight would be pinned so this is why we have queen d6 uh, inviting uh, for c5 uh, which Ariantari actually played, but first b5, kicking the knight, so there is no uh, pressure, for example, on d4, and this knight is free to go um, if needed. We have knight e7, we have c5 now, kicking the, the queen, queen c7, uh, and here is the critical moment of the game, because black, it looks like, okay, the position is quite equal, white have some counterplay, but in the truth, the position is extremely uh, difficult to play. What the engine suggests is bring the rook to c3 immediately. Uh, because that's gonna be, you know, the main problem on the, on the defense. So bring the rook. There is still problem, of course, with g4. H takes on g4, um, rook takes on g4. But white would have very interesting continuation. Knight e5 with the attack on the rook, uh, with the attack on this dangerous bishop. And um, because, you know, if e5, e4 is coming, this bishop gonna be really alive together with the queen and the bishop on this diagonal. Uh, so probably what black would play is just um, take two pieces for the, for the rook this way. F takes on e5 queen g4 and then take the the knight on d2 uh, and the rook cannot be taken because after rook h3 there is also a threat which um, it's uh, very difficult to to actually stop there is only one way with the with the rook g8 and after queen h4 uh, rook g7 this rook can actually pick up the pawn on e5 and continue the attack for example, this way. Uh, but if, if, for example, we have another moves like, let's say, knight f5, and uh, there is still queen f6, uh, and some even perpetual checks just if uh, the attack uh, is not successful. So black would have to be extremely careful. So this probably would be way to go. But we have g3. Uh, and now there is the huge question, how to answer with black? Because uh, taking the pawn, sacrificing on g3 is very tempting. So let's see what would happen here. Bishop g3, f takes on g3, queen takes on g3, and now bishop g2, and how you continue the attack. g4, of course, is, the, uh, is obvious. Of course, the knight is under attack, and uh, if you take, for example, the bishop, then you open the, the, the g file, so that nothing good can come um, out of that. So this is why we have h takes on g4, more natural, rook g4, and now bishop h3, kicking the rook, rook g7, uh, and now again, how you continue, because black gonna concentrate uh, all the all the power on the, on the g3, all the pieces are gonna concentrate and attack on, on g3, which is, you know, uh, very, very dangerous. Uh, if you try, for example, knight f1, 
let's say knight f1, you actually give up the, the exchange. So that's the problem. It's uh, It can be played, but of course it's uh, it's uh, still, you know, you are exchanged down in the very dangerous position and you don't have any, any counterplay. Bishop e6, you can win that pawn and um, yes, but at the end um, the knight also gonna come to g3 and already four pieces attacking the, the g3 square. So uh, it's, it's very difficult actually uh, what to play. We have king h1 with the very simple uh, threat, you know, picking up the, the bishop. So uh, what to do now? Bishop g3 again is a very tempting move. So uh, bishop g3, f takes on g3, uh, queen takes on g3, um, but now knight g1 defending the, the bishop and uh, still black has some advantage, but it's not so easy actually to find the finishing moves. Let's say bring the, bring the knight, uh, queen f3, queen would like to be, you know, avoid the exchange, queen h4, uh, and now white could get even some counterplay on the, on the queen side. So uh, this, this rook is blocked now and uh, as you see that could be the, the option. So Alireza of course uh, didn't go for this variation, it looked like uh, it's not really great for him. Uh, he want to be more precise and he just play e5, opening this diagonal. Uh, the bishop is without um, any protection so and also exchanging these bishops would be in favor of, of blacks that white would not have the protection of light squares and uh, that would be highly problematic with the king in the corner. Uh, this is why we have bishop d7 in our game, queen d7 and now finally uh, no, you still cannot take the bishop because you're gonna get checkmated and there is no uh, solution for that. So you still cannot take um, the bishop. So we have knight h2 and now bishop can be taken. The problem is after queen h3, Alireza says, no, the bishop cannot be taken again because if you take it, I'm gonna, uh, of, of course, uh, checkmate you on g2. So we have rook g1 fighting for the g2 square. Now the bishop is under attack but here Alireza said okay take my bishop I, I don't mind and uh, who calculate better the person who would like to take that bishop or Alireza uh, if you play g takes on f4 there is a problem rook g2 and you're gonna get checkmated on the h2 if you bring the, the knight to f1, then of course you disconnect the, the rook and the queen, you're gonna get checkmated on g1, so that's not possible. And if you play knight f3, uh, the problem is e4 and this knight gonna collapse and in the next move uh, the, the checkmate gonna happen. Whatever you play doesn't really matter, this is the checkmate. You can even take that pawn, but this is a checkmate. So what else white could play? The engine recommends d takes on e5 and after f takes on e5, rook c3, bring the rook to defend the g3. Uh, and this way actually the knight can, can jump to f1 and also support g3 uh, while the bishop would not take the, the, the exchange on c1. So uh, that could be the plan. However, e4 and the main idea here uh, would be d4 and, and e3 and just destroy the pawn structure. This pawn would have to react somehow and this pawn is actually crucial to a uh, crucial defender of the g3 pawn so that would be the problem knight f3 could be played uh, actually to support uh, and here at least black would have to think what to play next because you cannot just you know bring them the knight immediately just to support this move and just to uh, to attack uh, make the final attack on g3 it looks pretty much logical however white would have very nice resources queen d5 uh, and uh, this attack doesn't work let's say knight g3 with check f takes on g3 bishop takes on g3 with some mating ideas and after exchanging also more pieces uh, rook g3 knight g3 rook g3 looks like black are doing great but at the end there is always queen e5 with check with the attack on this rook uh, and of course in this position uh, white is completely uh, winning so Black at least would have to play something like a queen e6, just, you know, re reorganize them, the position a bit, but now, you know, uh, e3 is just inevitable. Uh, c6 is too early, white doesn't have any good moves, this is the defensive stance, uh, maybe something like a4, but then knight f5 is a very strong, and uh, you can uh, try to play something like c6, but now d4, 
Rook e3 still staying on the on the third rank and e3 wins the game. As I said, uh, this pawn has to react somehow. It's gonna be taken or it's gonna take or it's gonna uh, move forward. That means the g3 pawn not gonna have the support and uh, the game is lost. So uh, very difficult position. Even the best recommendation by the engine, you know, leads to the uh, losing position. Uh, we have queen e2 by Ariantari. Uh, and now simply e4. Uh, e4 taking away the, the f3 square so the knight cannot jump there and in the future in the right moment e3 is coming and uh, it's difficult to, to find any defensive moves. We have rook c3 finally but now it's too late. Knight f5 so continuing the attack and here uh, in the act of desperation Ariantari actually uh, found the, the idea of exchanging the knight for these two dangerous pawns because this is just inevitable and um, the position is completely lost so he want to at least uh, get maybe some counterplay with these pawns we have d takes on e4 queen e4 and now finally Ali Reza said okay now I can sacrifice on g3 my bishop so we have bishop g3 the point is uh, it even cannot be taken because after f takes on g3 g3 knight g3 with check rook c to g3 uh, rook g3 uh, rook g3 queen g3 there is the checkmate on g1 and there is the checkmate on g2 and uh, white cannot defend both of them i uh, can you know uh jump with the knight disconnect the rook with the with the queen but of course uh that's all they can do and the checkmate is coming in the next move so all they can do is you know uh lo lose it this way this this pawn just gonna uh, win the game so uh that's not even possible to take them the bishop this is why we have a rook g2 defending h2 so there is no checkmate but now alireza firuja found the final blow Rook e7 with tempo getting with the rook to another open file uh, and this time that would that means that would be a checkmate because if the rook goes to g1 we would have the checkmate on h2 so queen b1 now defending e1 but now we have a rook um, g to e8 and in this position Aryan Tari resign and he resigned because if he gonna bring the, the rook to the, to the protection on the first rank, uh, we gonna have bishop h2 and uh, this bishop even cannot be taken. If it's taken, then we have queen f3, rook g2, uh, rook g7. You can support this rook, but then um, the rook gonna deliver the checkmate on h4 and you cannot do much about that. Um, and also, if you try something like a rook c to g3, that would be a much better solution, but it doesn't work because after rook e1, rook g1, you have always knight g3 with check, f takes on g3 um, and now you're gonna get checkmated on h2. So this way or another uh, you're gonna get checkmated, it doesn't matter now, uh, you're gonna even take this 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 rook that's gonna be um, of course the, the checkmate. So uh, that's why um, Aryan Tari resigned. Beautiful game and it's a very very difficult to uh, to find you know the fatal mistake there is no one fatal mistake Ariantari said okay I try to make all the moves logical and he delivered that he played the very logical move he found to uh, you know counterplay on them on the queen side but somehow you know exchanging this bishop for the knight very dangerous knight uh, was probably the fatal mistake but it's very difficult to find you know any other plan so alireza firuja just outplay him and uh, we don't even know you know how that happened and uh, we've seen a lot of this kind of games in the in the past in the beginning of the 20th century with uh, akiba rubinstein you know improved the position of the pieces and finally he got the final blow and nobody knows how that happened uh, and here Alireza Firuja in the age of 17 deliver you know similar quality uh, games you know even more quality in the 21st century of course but with the same uh, devastating effect so uh, Ariantari was uh, was uh, you know quite depressed after after this loss because 
he did the best what he could and that was not enough and he's you know um the world champion you junior a world champion but but that was not enough so quite shocking uh how alireza firuja is doing uh, in this tournament and um, and yeah that's all for today if you like this video press like if for some reason you don't like it press unlike and if you want to see uh more quality content on my channel press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and See you in the next one.